This evening is all about scholarship and fellowship. In Joseph Rickwork, we have one of the world's outstanding scholars, a man who is still learning about cities, about architecture, about history. And he will be telling us about some of his latest findings later on. Fellowship, in that tonight we are bringing together groups of people who, for all their different backgrounds, share a common aim, that of trying to make the world a better place to live in. And that sits very well with the RIBA's aim of championing better buildings, creating stronger communities, and making better use of the world's shrinking resources. The Honours Committee, which I chaired last July and comprised Sir David Chipperfield, Egg Parry, Louisa Hutton, and Frederick Migaru, debated many names, architects and non-architects. Among those we agreed on as international fellows, many are practitioners and include some of the world's top architects. Others have chosen other routes, the promotion of architecture through the written word, through teaching and through exhibiting architecture to the public. And then there are our new honorary fellows, who are not architects, but whom we are pleased to recognise for their significant contribution to architecture and to the public's understanding of the subject. Now, not everyone who's up for honour tonight has been able to get here, unfortunately, but we do have a representative here to collect the award on their behalf. So can I invite to the stage my good friend Hugh Pierman, editor of the RIBA Journal, who will be reading short citations from the honorary fellows. And you'll be able to read the full citations on architecture.com. Hugh. Um, thanks, Stephen. Um, the first um, RIBA honorary fellowship this year goes to Clive Carr. Uh, in 1985, Clive was appointed a founder chairman of RIBA Enterprises. The last 10 years have uh, seen a period of growth during which Enterprises has contributed, count them, 23 million pounds in profits to the RIBA. This considerable sum has assisted the Institute in developing an ever wider program of cultural and public facing activities, thereby raising people's consciousness of the importance of architecture and the built environment, not least through its publication of the RIBA Journal. His quiet authority and leadership ensured that the business continued to perform consistently during two recessions while stepping up investment in development. The company is now delivering cutting edge new technologies, including its current leadership in building information modeling. President, thank you for those kind words. May I just give two reasons of many why I'm very proud to receive this award. The first is because it is recognition by the Institute of the trust placed in me to represent its interests uh, in the early years of IBA Agency Limited and more particularly uh, in the founding and developing of IB Enterprises. And secondly, because it is an appreciation also of the company itself and the significant contribution it makes to the RIBA family. Thank you. The second new um, RIBA Honorary Fellowship is uh, Professor Francesco Del Co, who sadly is unable to be here tonight, so collecting it on his behalf is David Tripperfield. Uh, Professor Del Co is one of uh, Italy's most distinguished architectural historians. He's been director of the Department of History of Architecture at the University of Venice since 1994, and has been a professor at Yale and the University of Italian Switzerland. In Lugano. <laughs> David, you would like to do all these things. He was director of the Venice Architecture Biennale, as was David, between 1988 and 1991. Since 1978, he has been the curator of architecture publications for Electa, and since 1996, editor of the influential architecture magazine Casabella. The next honorary fellowship goes to Roger Grafe, ODE. Uh, Roger Arthur Grafe is a criminologist and filmmaker who has exploited his uncanny ability to gain access to hitherto closed legal and governmental institutions to make innumerable groundbreaking documentaries. He's made a number of films about cities and architecture, including documentaries on Walter Gropius, Detroit, and Cardiff. Roger served with Sir John Bannon on the RIBA's Future Homes Commission, a year-long independent inquiry into the quality of newly built housing 
that reported in October 2012. He has served on the board of the ICA and created and chaired its architectural forum and has been a tutor at the Architectural Association. He was a board member of London Transport and, it says here, co-designed the London bus map. Legislation. Um, it's a great honour for me to be here, but I must make clear, for, for all these years of working around and in and with architects, my role has been as a member of the public and as a user who cares about architecture. And the, the privilege of being on the Commission for the Future of Housing was probably the most interesting thing I've done about it. And we spent a year together moving up and down the country looking at buildings that were being offered to sale and were being lived in. And frankly, it was a very mixed picture. And what I want to say to you all is that the responsibility of architects, given the developers are trapped with this thing of only counting bedrooms and not actually measuring the quality of the buildings themselves, is to make sure that there's enough light, there's enough storage, and there's enough space so people can live in the 21st century where children come back, old people want to live in, in adaptable homes, not just these ticky-tacky boxes which are the extra on the price of land. That's not good enough. You deserve better, and so does everybody else. Thank you very much. The next honorary fellowship goes to Louise Hortet. Uh, Louise was, until recently, the director of the Mies van der Rohe Foundation in Barcelona, which had been set up in 1983 to reconstruct the German pavilion designed by Mies for a 29 Barcelona International Exhibition. He trained as a lawyer, specializing in urban planning. And in the 1980s, he was very involved in the policies of regeneration of the city, working with Oriol Bojigas and the mayor, Pascal Marigal. Luis was one of those responsible for establishing the biennial Mies van der Rohe Award for European Architecture in 1988 and for ensuring the rigor of a prize that sends a jury to visit the shortlisted works before, the prizing, before deciding the prize winner and the emerging architect special mention. So, thank you very much. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. And what I want to say is just I want to share this prize with all the people that has contributed to the diffusion and acknowledgement of uh, European architecture, which is a great heritage. And uh, I feel proud of this. And uh, uh, also, I, I'm very happy uh, to express the gratitude in the name of the Miss Foundation. Thank you. Next to our Bay Honorary Fellow is Sir Richard Lees, leader of Manchester City Council. Uh, Sir Richard Lees, uh, CBE, has been the leader of Manchester Council since 1996 with Sir Howard Bernstein, which has overseen the 10-year regeneration of the city after the RA bomb of 1996, a period in which the council has provided an inspiring example of civic leadership, echoing the spirit in which the city fathers created the great architectural landmarks of the 19th century. Richard also led the development of a major sports and event strategy, including the 22 Commonwealth Games, and since 2007, the Manchester International Festival, a triennial artist-led commissioning festival, presenting new work from across the spectrum of performing and visual arts. Uh, th thanks very much. Um, I, I suppose this is as much an award for my city as it is for me, but uh, for me it reflects, I think, 25 years now, quarter of a century of city, uh, city building, uh, starting not with uh, sort of prestigious buildings within the city centre, actually starting in the neighbourhood just south of the city centre, the neighbourhood of Hume, uh, trying to create a place for people to live, having, uh, before that, my predecessors created a place where nobody uh, could uh, uh, could, could live. It's about ch uh, changing uh, that. And uh, I started a quarter of a century ago. Your president got there a bit before me and actually built a, uh, a doctor's surgery, a very lovely doctor's surgery in that, uh, uh, in, in, in that 
that neighbourhood, but it, it went on to uh, uh, other things, and certainly the city centre, uh, post IRA uh, bomb, although something I'm particularly proud of is the work we've done on our schools over the past uh, uh, ten, 10 years, which are, uh, I think are uh, a beacon of good design in areas that are desperate for uh, good design. In that journey, uh, we've been helped by an enormous number of uh, uh, Me members of the Royal Institute of British Arch Architects. Uh, the good thing for you is that city building never finishes. It is a permanent process and there will be lots and lots more opportunities for you to help us over the next quarter of a century as well. Thank you very much. Our fifth honorary fellow is a um, great pleasure this one is Irena Murray, immediate past Sir Bannister Fletcher librarian at the RIBA. Irena is a proud born architectural historian and curator who worked at the National Archives of Canada and at McGill University. From 2004 until she left in 2013, she brought the role of RIBA librarian into national scholarship of the highest order, thereby raising the status and reputation of the RIBA and its collections. The achievement of which she is most proud is the abolition of charges for using the RIBA's library. She has curated exhibitions on Czech architecture in Montreal, New York, and Philadelphia, and at the RIBA on Adolf Loos, Mies van der Rohe, and Charles Courier. She has written essays and exhibition texts on Moshe Safdie, Palladio, and Le Corbusier. To be a custodian of great collections uh, assembled over a period of 180 years by British architects is in itself a great award. Uh, to be able to help bring them to life is not a thing one can do alone. And so I would like to thank the president and the committee for uh, the honorary fellowship, which I would like to share with my colleagues at the British Architectural Library. Thank you. Nick Pierce, Director of the Institute for Public Policy Research and member of the British Architectural Trust Board. Nick is a director of IPPR, the UK's leading progressive think tank. He joined the board while working as head of the policy unit at Number 10 Downing Street, where he provided a stream of new ideas for the Labour government. There he also pioneered the first cross-departmental strategy for design, architecture and the public realm. As an active member of the Trust Board, he was commissioned to produce a highly influential report into the RIB Awards Programme, leading to many of the changes to the Regional and RIB Awards, which were implemented in 2012. Nick's an author and regular commentator and blogger on public policy. In much of his writing, he demonstrates his commitment to an architecture of the common good. Thank you, thank you very much indeed, Hugh, um, President, and uh, it, this is a great uh, honour for me, and uh, it feels completely undeserved in such distinguished company, but I hope I've been able to play uh, a small role in connecting politicians and policymakers to architecture and architects, and I firmly believe in the value of great architecture in furthering our common good. So thank you very much indeed for this award. Thank you. The penultimate 2014 RIBA Honorary Fellowship goes to Lady Sainsbury of Turville, CVE. Susie Sainsbury is Deputy Chairman of the Royal Shakespeare Company and Deputy Chairman of the Royal Academy of Music. She began her career in publishing, working for the Oxford University Press, before joining Jonathan Cape as a commissioning editor. At the RSC, she chaired the redevelopment in Stratford-upon-Avon of both the award-winning Courtyard Theatre by Ian Ritchie Architects and the uh, £113 million pound transformation of the Royal Shakespeare Theatre by Bennett's Associates, shortlisted for the RIB Sterling Prize. It doesn't stop there. She was part of the client team for the 2012 Sterling Prize winning Sainsbury Laboratory, Cambridge, by Stanton Williams. She acted as an incisive lay judge in the RIB Awards in London in 2007, and in 2006 she was a member of the RIB Honours Committee. I'm really rather amazed to be here and to be receiving this honour. It's not often one's rewarded for being bossy, interfering and asking endless questions. 
I've been lucky enough to work with quite a few of the architects here tonight on some wonderful projects. And if I've learned to be an effective client, it's because of your teaching, patience, and generosity with ideas. Thank you. I'd hoped that Tony might have tucked a magic wand in with a certificate, but it seems he didn't. If I had one, there's one thing I'd like to do, which is put heavy controls on design and build. Architects train even longer than doctors. If they survive the PQQ, which requires a separate rant, we subject them to rigorous competitive interviews. We choose the best for our project and delight in the development of ideas and inspired design. But as soon as we have a complete scheme, which meets our cost plans and design dreams, in comes design and build. And we relegate the architects to the role of backroom boys, reporting not to the client, but to the construction team. And round the corner comes value engineering, rant number three. It seems to me like choosing a surgeon for an important operation and preparing carefully with his team. And then halfway to the operating theatre, being told the porter pushing the trolley will actually be doing the operation, <laughs> with your consultant observing silently from behind a screen. We'd all regard that as ridiculous, but seem happy to sign up to design and build. Surely the RIBA should be fighting for our architects. Uh, okay. finally, finally, photographer extraordinaire Thomas Boot. Uh, Thomas is uh, Germany's most widely exhibited and collected fine art photographer and one of the foremost contemporary artists in the world. His ever includes detailed depictions of cityscapes, ocean jungles, and family portraits. In 1976, he exhibited a grid of 49 photographs taken on Düsseldorf's deserted streets. He then went to New York, where he created a series of black and white urban landscapes. Between 1989 and 2005, he developed his best known series, the Museum Photographs, which captured individuals and crowds looking at iconic works of art. Over the last 15 years, Thomas has expanded his repertoire, creating images from the fields of science and technology, showing how our faith in progress can be visually represented as a process of group dynamics. Um, thank you very much for this offer. Um, my curiosity, uh, interest, uh, love, and uh, a little bit of knowledge uh, of architecture it uh, stems actually from the fact that, that I'm uh, a post-war German uh, a child who was uh, um, erased in the kind of, uh, scattered um, uh, and uh, patchwork architecture of post-war uh, Germany. When I, uh, my first experiences uh, with architects uh, made me think that they are, uh, yeah, that, or that they were, uh, better to say, uh, uh, a bit too self-confident and sometimes arrogant. Uh, and I've changed that opinion uh, in the meantime. And uh, uh, my, my work about architecture was mainly uh, made to, to give things uh, that don't have a voice, uh, a presence, uh, and a, a particular uh, bigger degree of attention. Thank you very much. So congratulations to all our new uh, honorary fellows and we look forward to working with you uh, in the years to come.